Hello. Hi, guys. Um, I did get a new headset, so I feel like my mics might sound a little bit janky. So um, if you guys have like mic recommendations, that would really help. Um, I hope everyone's having... Hi, reimagined skies. <laughs> Sorry, Sayori. Um, hopefully everyone's having a good afternoon. Hope everyone's having a good week. Everyone's excited to start their week, etc. All that stuff. Um, let me just, you know, get all the intro stuff out of the way. Um, thanks for coming. Uh, did you know we're an online art school? We offer weekly online classes in small groups. Um, you can attend live or with recordings. Um, you can get direct feedback from your instructor so you know how to improve. They'll keep you accountable, help you achieve your goals, and cheer you on. Um, you can also become a <laughs> membership uh, on YouTube or Patreon and get lots of perks. You'll get access to our class recordings, behind the scene posts, early cuts of our videos, layered working files of our artwork created on stream, and you'll also get access to our members only chat and critique channels on Discord. You can help our mission to make art education easily accessible to everyone. And uh, you can also follow us at all of these links here. We're a growing community of art nerds who stick together and support each other. On Discord, you can share your artwork and chat with other art nerds on Instagram and Facebook. Um, if you create along with us, share your artwork and tag us at Winged Canvas. Um, all our links to join our membership and our social media are in the description below. So, whew. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Hiero Chariot. Um, is the music volume okay? Hopefully. I did notice some, like, um, I gotta keep my voice a bit steady or else the audio might spike, but we'll just do our best. But yeah, thanks so much for coming. Today we're going to be doing um, like wintery fashion, so like wintery clothes. That's always fun. It is very cold where I live. There's always hills of snow and all those things. So there's no music. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, maybe I just need to turn on the audio, perhaps. Turn up the audio. Duh. Any music in a couple seconds, perhaps? Maybe I need to turn on the... Yeah, it was. Hello, Horizon Sky. That is so weird. Well, I guess I'll have to figure that out later. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Jamming. <laughs> when I go out on walks, I have to hold my phone and then my um, my hands freeze up. And I get worried about them like peeling or whatever. All right, so we're going to be drawing winter clothes today. Um, that's going to be really fun because it's like, I think we can get a little bit, um, it can be a little bit difficult to draw wintery clothes because of like, they're a little bit formless sometimes since, um, because they are like, they go over like all our bodies or whatever, like those big coats and stuff, they can, you can kind of end up looking like, like just a little, some little guy in like really puffy outfits and stuff. And then it's like difficult to sort of draw um, poses since you have a lot of stuff on you. <laughs> but yeah. So we're gonna give this a try. I'm gonna, I think I will go for like maybe some like a very like casual, cute looking like winter outfit, like with a sweater 
and then go for like something more heavy with like a huge coat. Uh, maybe I'll do like a couple of poses. Depends on what you guys like and what you guys might have questions on since like, uh, you know, we're here for your benefit. So if you guys have any like particular like curiosity about how to draw wintry clothes, feel free to ask. I'm gonna start with like maybe a general pose first. <laughs> If you guys like still don't hear music, I will take note of that and fix it for the next stream. Otherwise, you guys might have to play music yourself, unfortunately. Good morning from Australia. Good morning. I always have trouble with fur linings. Sure. I like drawing those. Uh, to do. <laughs> That's good. Jamming. Good for me anyways. <laughs> I think there are some things that um are always good for uh like you need silence to do, like if you're actually studying. And like not just like doodling. I personally really like um, drawing people in wintry clothes because um, when I used to go cafe sketching, uh, there's no reason I that why I stopped doing it. If you can do it, you should do it. It's mostly just because of location. But the funny thing is, when you're like when I was out there drawing people, it was winter time, so people would all would kind of look the same because you would just see a lot of people like with just like their pom-pom hats, their like their hair maybe, and then their huge jackets and like their hoods, like so. And then like their hands are covered because everybody's like has cold hands. So you only really see like this sort of like shape, like everywhere. <laughs> like just this thing at the back with the hood. And then like, this was basically it. That was just every single person in like uh, the winter time. And it's more or less the same, I think, uh, nowadays. But yeah, so because we don't actually have to draw like the hand, I can like chill it a little bit with the pose. So let's try like maybe I mean, we'll see how this this can work out. Put that back. Thanks for coming so late. <laughs> yeah, cafe sketching is really fun and it's really like useful since it's basically like free life drawing. Although I do feel like we get into this problem where because we're in a cafe, everyone's sitting or standing in line. So everyone sort of has the same pose where they're all like hunched over or looking at their phones. So that can be a little, <laughs> like it's just stuff you'll notice. Okay, so for the first, like, girl, I guess. We'll go for, <coughs> pardon me, we'll go for something a bit cuter. I think my favorite thing to draw for, like, is probably, like, scarves. One of the, my, like, my favorite things to draw, because they're just so, like, they are simple character design, like, accessories, I feel like, that just tell you a lot about the 
character and they cover up they can cover up the face they can cover up like this area of like where the jackets go over and then like that's always kind of difficult to draw for me so i'd rather just cover it up with a scarf and you can kind of like also like uh control how much of a scarf you want like someone to have the general like all you had to do think like think of it is just like think of just like a paper like you cut a paper strip and then you just taped it together like that into like some sort of collar and then you just kind of crunch it down a little and then you just add like a little bit of edge back to like so it's not like a piece of paper so you can like just actually just draw an edge or color it in when you're like shading and then all these other stuff like all this other stuff you can kind of just it's all trial and error and just like depending on what you like since some scarves are really long and others are really short and you know how like there's like a bunch of like anime stuff where people will just have like really long scarves you know so that's like also your choice i love big fluffy poopy designs yeah me too And then for like the sort of like wrap area, um, you just sort of consider like these folds. I hope that makes sense. Like if you wrap something, usually like if you have a scarf, like reference of course is always useful. It's kind of less a piece of paper and more like a tube of stuff maybe i'll like kind of like a, a tuby blob of fabric and, I, and like i know like even if the scarf isn't striped i think attic stripes would also make it look a little like a little more um like formful scars with hoods <laughs> yeah like cloaks and then like if you want to like add more to your scarf you just add like you just keep in mind that this like that this air the top one is kind of tucked in to the bottom one to the ones that you'll add so you just kind of have to be a little bit like careful about it oops something like that and then so on and so forth this one is going to be a little bit tucked into the neck to the one in the bottom slightly because like there's going to be a uh, protrusion oh, let me get my brush again so like if I turn this on the side it would be like this you know like this that makes sense a little bit in some way yeah a little like a brace you just gotta soft like make it squishier so that it like looks more like a scarf instead of like a hard brace but, you know, as usual, uh, reference is always nice to have. And because, like, you know, when you when you do look at reference, you'll, like, notice, like, scarves look really, like, messed up. Like, they're just, like, kind of looking a little interesting, but... 
this might help you like sort of like think about it like go about thinking about it and of course there's the scarf then they always have like the little frills I think maybe like some sort of some sort of sweater might be cute. Long skirt. So it is are always fun because like they're kind of like most sweaters tend to be a little oversized like generally like this sort of um like diamond shape like this kind of shape usually this is the collar Yeah, I think I'm even though I get cold really easily, I'm like more of a wintry person. I feel like there's more like solutions. Like if you're if you're really hot, then what can you really do? Really, turn on the AC, but that's like expensive. And then if you're like cold, you can just bundle up. Or turn on the heater, or you can like eat something hot, you know, turn on the fireplace, cuddle up with someone, things like that. So here's just like the sort of overflowing part of the of the sweater. Then maybe there's like, I'll do like a little hat. The hats are can be a little tricky because they're like, they're pretty like, I don't know if you guys have worn like toques. You can just kind of, they can, they're really like snug against your head. So it can seem like they're like very like tight, but then like the top part is like loose, which can be a little like funky. And there's like the ball. Sometimes I like to just like, after I draw the ball, I like to add just like little bits of like lines at the ends just to like indicate like fuzziness. But so that's like one way to do it. And then of course the person's hair is always gonna be like all tucked into their, their toque. If they have long hair, their hair might get like bunched up from like, you know, being stuffed inside like the, the scarf. I think their hand can actually probably go out a little bit more. Yeah. It's a stylistic choice. If you want it to be like more fuzzy, then you can like go back and like, like if you want it to look more soft, I guess. You can like kind of do like the big shape of like your circle and like just add like fluff like that. Or you can just like add your like another thing where you'd like, oops, where if you just have like broken lines in your circle and then you just add like little lines like that, 
like that. And that also looks like a little fuzzy. There's a lot of ways to do it. I think I might just try like adding the sweater like here. Holding on to like her bag, maybe maybe she has gloves on, so I don't have to draw like thing to like her fingers or whatever. Oh yeah, boots. Sure. So boots, I actually think it is really important to have like um, reference because like shoes have a surprising like. A surprising amount of construction so like I know like I also do this but I tend to draw boots in a very simplistic way like so right like a boot or if I'm really like feeling spicy a boot like <laughs> um for the most part I think this is like fun uh, but most shoes actually so the way like it goes usually is there will usually be this sort of like wrap sort of thing around like someone's like depending on what kind of shoe it is of course like if they have like laces if they have laces usually it will they will have like these two layers extra layers on top like that and then there'll be like the seam where like your heels are and that's because like you know they're gonna like lace together right so they have like this sort of thing to it and then you can like add like all the details that you want after like if it's a really like you know a leathery boot you might want to add like stuff like you know a little bend at the at the edge um things like that Um, Kelsey, you guys are free to put in, like, you know, just topics in the chat related to wintry clothing, and then I guess I will choose whatever I feel like is relevant, <laughs> but, or you can just ask, and then, like, maybe we'll make a future video, like, for it. You know, I mean, the sky, I mean, the sky's the limit. And token, if I wanted to start tackling art seriously, could I make it out alive if I only drew on paper like 10% of the time? Yeah, uh, it depends on what field you want to go into though. Like if you want to be an illustrator then you're and you want like traditional work, um, you're perfectly capable of making like a living doing that. Um, but it's <coughs> it's difficult, of course, as is with everything. That's not discouragement. Um, you'll just have to have a very, like, strong technique and a strong, like, style. Like, I feel like when I look at a lot of, um, like, illustrators who do work traditionally, most of them do, like, watercolors or ink work, um, things like that, To And then, like, that is, like, also very, like, uh, popular. You can always, also, always, like, make prints and stuff. And things like that of your like watercolors or inks um you can probably make prints with like your pencils as well you can always also draw like comics i mean there's not there's no rule really about like saying like you have to do it digitally you'll just have to be able to get your traditional work into a digital format like you'll have to scan it in which might be troublesome but like you know <laughs> that's what we were doing before digital programs so so yeah Sky's the limit. <clears throat> Cap boy in a fluffy jacket. You know what? Why not? That would be good for fur. Uh, I had a to-do list that I guess I deleted. <laughs> okay, so...
fluffy jacket. Hopefully we'll be able to get to through these. And gloves. Okay. Um Also, like, for the most part, like, there are a lot of shoes that are, like, if they're not laced, then they'll just be, like, a lot more smoother. Um, the general shape is to just, like, think of it as, like, you know, like, you know, your ankle, your cylinder, your tapered cylinder, I guess. Like that. And then think of, like, this flat. <laughs> if you want to, like, start with it, just think of, like, this flat sort of, like, flipper. And then, like, just putting them together. For now, like just this flat sort of thing. And then you can go in and like as you like draw a lot of feet. <laughs> yes. I'm telling you guys to draw feet educationally. Um then you'll like slowly get like the sort of like figure of like the foot, and then you'll realize like, oh, so like a shoe is for feet to go into, so then you'll just it will come to you naturally. <laughs> Something I feel like people don't really talk about a lot in terms of like, like, can you be an artist when you grow up is like, and like make money is that a lot of the times, um, Unless you're like a sp doing a specific industry job, like say, oops, like animation, modeler, rigging, VFX, like one of the more commercial stuff, um, or like, you know, like a teacher, uh, I feel like art tends to be very like, it's more like you're supporting yourself with a lot of different types of hustles i don't want to say hustles like businesses like a a bunch of different um like money making avenues i guess so like for example a lot of like you know because it's really hard to like do things like like oh i'll just make a successful youtube channel and live off that like it's hard to do stuff like that or i'll just become a successful streamer or i'll just make merch and sell that or even something like, I'll just get an art job. Like, these are all very nebulous and frankly, not very secure. So <laughs> it's more like you'll just try to do everything and then, or like do like, you know, you'll make some prints. Maybe you'll do conventions so that you can have like, you know, you can sell things at conventions. And then you can also have your online store. And then you can also like, you know, build up your social media and maybe you have a day job or you do have your like animation job or whatever but you'll be looking for like contracts all the time etc but yeah <laughs> maybe that's too depressing for this sort of like <laughs> talk try and cap ways snow pants yeah But you guys don't have to worry about that now. You guys are still in like the fun, the fun stage. Mittens, mittens are easy. You don't really have to. You can just draw like blobs. All right. So, what were we doing? Camp boys. Let me know if you guys recognize this particular cat boy. I almost wish you guys won't though. All right, what did we agree for like, <laughs> for like the cat boy fur, fluffy jacket? Maybe you can we can put him in snow pants too. Um. 
So for fluffy jackets, um, are you, do you mean like a jacket with like a fur lined coat? Um, or like just like a puffy like like jacket? Like the super like, I guess it doesn't matter. I can do both. Um, so the way like jackets, I think, are usually like constructed, because um, I think it will help to sort of think of like how a jacket is put together. Because some jackets have deta detachable hoods, so when they do stuff like that, um, you'll know like you know you have like a collar, which is usually like very like. Very big collar. And I feel like it is a bit complicated since they usually have like this sort of strip like that. Then like the front, but the front has like the sort of like the corner. And I have trouble drawing it since because I it's hard so I'm like I don't want to draw jackets so all my characters don't wear like things like this but you know I mean snap uh-huh anyway <laughs> Oh, I hope you guys don't hear me slurping. <laughs> no, I didn't. Or maybe let's try this instead. This might be a little bit too, like, complicated. Sometimes, like, you'll have, like, those, like, super, like, puffy, you know, collars like that. And for, like, those, like, puffy jackets, um, you can try to just... So you have... Once you have, like, the pose, like, the basic pose that, like, I drew or that you've drawn for your character, because you know a puffy jacket is like puffy, you can kind of like guess the shape like around everything because you know it's going to be like bigger than your body and it kind of has to be because it's like so much like, it's, you know, it's so much extra puff. So you can just sort of figure it out where like the, like where, how it will like expand <laughs> around it sort of. And then you can kind of figure out where the zipper will be, like the inters, like the middle. And then after that, because like they have like this sort of like uh, pattern, right? Like this sort of thing. I don't actually know what those are, like what they're called. It's like sometimes they're square, you know, like that. And then like this is where the arm's going to come out, so can like leave that alone. And then once you kind of have this like pattern in, then you can actually go in and like add like the puff like that. Or you can color it, you know. <laughs> and then if you want if we want still want that like fur lined coat, um then we can just kind of take a look at Usually they have like this sort of like button thingy. I'm just gonna draw this because I like want, well, I guess that's not necessary. If you want a fur line coat, we could just like get to it. I like to usually start with like a sort of tube thing. 
do you want like him to wear the coat or if the coat to be like up like the hood up and of course like you know his arm can just be a blob like this is probably like where the like the pockets are generally Pockets tend to be in this like area. Then you can just kind of draw like a bigger arm because it's puffy. And then when you're putting in like those, <laughs> pardon me, those like patterns or not a pattern, those like fluff <laughs> sections, um, just remember like the form of the arm. So like because the arm is going like this, then it will also like whatever is on the arm will also curve around it as well. And then once you do that, you can also go back in and add the puff. might look a bit goofy so you might need to like go back in and like you know because you know art is design so like we want it to look nice so you can always go back in and add in like correct some things take out what you don't like add in what you do like stuff like that <laughs> Thank you, Kelsey. So if I guess if we have if we want like this sort of like fur lined hood, um, I just draw like this tube. So like as you can see, like this sort of like random tube, and then maybe like the hood at the end, like that. And this is just going to tell me basically like where um, my fluff is. And honestly, a lot of people just stop there. I stop there a lot of the times because it's like, well, if I color it white, <laughs> that will, that's fur. People will understand it. But like I said before, with like the little, um, like the pom-pom, you can always, there's like a variety of ways you can always like make it look more like fur. For example, you can always like after you do that, you can lower the opacity and then like draw like these sorts of like little U shapes. You also want to like pay attention to like the kind of like texture of the fur because this looks like a lot different than like, for example, if I just drew it like a more stylized way, like, like that, you know, like, like more edgy, you know, like this looks a little bit more like, I guess this one looks a little bit more furry. The other one looks a little bit more fuzzy, I guess. Uh, like, I guess we can add like, pretend like we have like, you know, like a fuzzy like cuffs or a fuzzy like, like, you know, like other like belt cuff like that so as you can see if you have different like uh textures like this looks more like i guess like sheep sheared wool fur and this might look like like a more animal fur that sort of thing but what i like to do for the most part is um you know Usually I pick some like some empty spaces and then just put like little dots because I it's just for time really, just to save time. Um and I do kinda like the minimalistic kind of like look it has sometimes.
Hopefully that makes sense. I think the most important parts are probably like the end here. Like that. I think this is cute. And then like if you want, you can also go in and add like little furry lines inside as well. Sort of like instead of like doing it too straight, try to think of it as like a fan. Because fur, I don't know if you have pets, but like fur does kind of have like, they come out of like skin a bit, a little bit like hair does. Like like layers, but from like s more grouped together points. Does that make sense? Hopefully it makes sense. Sorry, Kathleen, it could be my connection. Um. <laughs> Although, hmm. Oh, okay. All right, and then what do we say? Snow pants? Snow pants. Sorry, cat boy. I think this would be cute if, like, um, he was wearing, like, pant like, you know, like, thinner pants, but we're just going to make him wear super puffy ones. Then maybe like, so for winter boots, I'll just like, uh, I'll just like indicate them a little bit. So for snow pants, they are like, oh, I can just like, I can hear the snow pants like just scratch scratching as like someone's walking. It's sort of similar with like the top, the puffy top where, um, because you know it's going to be like thicker <laughs> and it's going to make you look a lot like puffier than you are you can sort of uh after you've drawn like your basic pose you can sort of think of like where like how much puff you want to add to it and then you can sort of design the shape here you won't necessarily have to like um you know like making it like realistic isn't exactly the goal here Remember where the seam is in the middle. And of course, if like, you know, the, if you have boots, then you want to like tuck it in. So then you can just do like the little, the little puff at the end, like so. Maybe more. It's kind of like a, the scarf, you know, like the same-ish technique. Or like the way of thinking where you like layers of like, rings so there's going to be like this is one leg and then there's going to be like the snow like boots perhaps his hooves <laughs> Like so. And like snow pants are, they look, there's like different kinds, right? So I'll just pretend that, I don't know, maybe he's wearing different shoes. So, like, for example, if his other leg was like, wasn't though, like it wasn't tucked up, um, then snow pants are pretty formless because they are pretty thick. So if his leg is just like that, then you kind of know, like, all you gotta do is gently suggest, like, just imagine it's just extremely thick fabric. And then, like, he's wearing just very thick pants. Because it's very thick, you don't need to do, like, the wrinkles. You don't need to make it stick too closely to, like, his leg. Like, if his leg's, like, this skinny, there's, like, a lot of space in between, you know? And then just remember where, like, you know, all the connection, like, the tension points are.
then a belt maybe? Do people use wear belts with snow pants? <laughs> I don't wear any myself. So it oops. So as you can see, it's not very glamorous, but Hello, Anthony. <laughs> So yeah. And then for like a shoe, I don't know. Maybe he didn't tuck this one in. Something like, actually, I don't think this needs to be shown. It's probably be something like so. <laughs> and even though, like, over here, I put like a lot of like wrinkles because they're snow pants you don't really need to because they're so like thick thick materials don't have as many wrinkles as like thin materials so i probably will try to knock that back a little bit and rely on just like the shape to convey like a bunched upness something like that Catboy ready to go skiing. This works for tails too, the little like fur thing where I like to like, like after I put, draw in like the initial line, I just add like all these like fur lines at the end. And then, you know, if your cat has like stripes, like a tabby, you can also like f make these like little lines in the sort of following the f the curve of the tail, like so, you know. <laughs> he does. I could like them a little bit. I think proportion is my like weakest, so good for catching that. He has big feet. Just try to keep your like proportions a little balanced. <laughs> Something like this. Hmm. I wonder if it's because you guys are like um, you, I, you don't have to answer, but if you guys aren't in North America, maybe the connection is just janky at the moment. All right, we have like ready to ski camp boy. Am 
might need to change his pose a little. Okay. Hmm. All right, we have Cluffy, Fluffy, Cluffy, Cat Boy Fluffy Jacket, Fur Linings, Snow Pants, Gloves. All right, so gloves are interesting because I feel like they can be both very difficult and very much easier than hands since so you know there's like a lot so let's just start with like so mittens mittens easy you know I think anyone can draw mittens and that's really like the basis of all like hands too um you basically just think of like you know two circles really and that's like those are your mittens or like more like complicated stuff with like gloves um, I'm sure everyone has seen those like you know those like really like I, I don't know what they're made of like like wool not wool it's like it's like fabric though they're like soft mittens that like go over every finger and like they end up making your hands look like like that <laughs> but they're like and they're usually like the ones I have tend to be like very pale colors like pink or purple or like beige and they're a little itchy yeah and they're like it's not leather so like these ones are hard because like because they don't they're like they don't wrinkle as much really so when you draw them and when you put them even when you're just wearing them in real life they look really fake because your hand just looks like you know like a block of stuff. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, like that kind of stuff. So, uh, for these ones, I guess it might be a bit easier since then you don't have to draw in all the details. Let's try drawing. Pretty girl. Wearing some gloves. And this is just like her jacket, collar thing. So like if she has gloves, they are just kind of like just drawing like hands, regular hands. Actually. So with gloves, you do just draw like regular hands. But like a little chunkier because they are like they have gloves so they're gonna be like not as um tapered so yeah <laughs> pretend this is a wonderful hand so like the fun part though is that like once you draw like the general shape of the hand it's like okay well this is a hand it has gloves on it and then you can just draw like 
what I like to draw do about the gloves is like they have a lot of like wrinkles or like folds usually at like the bendy points because they it's like fabric and it's like still like this thick sort of layer on top of your hand so when you bend them it all gets bunched up even if it's like a very thin glove so like at all the areas that will like bend there's like there tends to be like these little like you know like bumps of fabric that uh, we like to draw so much and then it's going to be at like the wrist area as well these are for like leather gloves mainly that i'm thinking about and like you know the ends you can like Add like fur or something, something cute. <laughs> yes, the bendy points is exactly the term. The joints. <laughs> and something I like to do for like gloves in particular is adding the seams. So like just along like the fingers. Like I'll just add like a very thin line that goes through like the sides of like the glove and stuff because I feel like it just makes it look a lot more glovey. <laughs> That's also a technical term. Um, it's just like finishing up my girl, like a more thinner jacket. It's still quite like like so. Hopefully that makes sense though. And then like I guess you could also do that with like the super like fuzzy ones. You'll just have to like think about the shape of what your hand looks like after you put the gloves on and like edit your hand you know according to that shape it can be a little hard because they like it doesn't have a lot of form in it that you can like sort of draw on I feel like so maybe like adding just like extra lines to show that it's fuzzy <laughs> yeah if you we want like some more like cuter gloves you know um, I think like it just like goes back to like you know just drawing hands like Which I think we can like go over in like another video. Do we have a hand video? Because like, for example, if I do like a fingerless gloves, which I do really like, even though I feel like there's not many um like situations to wear it, then everything will wrap around like the fingers and the wrist. And like the parts that are like the gloved parts of the hand. Um, will be bigger, like bumpier, sort of. In like, so what I mean by that is like, you know, it has like padding usually, right? There's like a clear division between like where the hand is, which is like the fingers, the skin, and the actual like glove, which is like this whole extra like beefy layer, including like the whatever this thing is called, the cuff, stuff like that. And then this is what makes it looks look like looks like a glove. Then, like, say, like something painted on your hand. Just adding, like, um, like clear silhouette breaks. I'm just trying to think of like winter gloves. 
I know people wear like leather gloves sort of and like the fluffy gloves. And then mittens, I don't think people need help drawing mittens. Usually. But yeah, let me know if that made sense. Heels, maybe? I feel like that's so dangerous for winter, though. So even here, because it's smaller, it's going to be a little bit harder, but hopefully it looks more like gloves. <laughs> Adding sort of like, eh, something. I think less detail, so like basically like less detail, I would say, for like individual like hand stuff. And trying to make the tips of like your fingers more like boxy instead of like tapered for gloves, because you do have something over your your hands. So they're not going to be as thin. Yeah. I think so too. <laughs> Maybe this part could be a bit smaller. A bit, a bit better. Then winds are pretty fun. <laughs> okay. I think maybe the cat boy's head is also really small. Okay. Yeah, I think so too. Colorful jackets are so fun.
joints. Right. Yeah, okay. Gonna try to color in like a cowboy. I will say if you do like this sort of like fur technique, it is gonna be troublesome when you're like fill bu uh, bucket tooling. But yeah, you know, art is never easy. <laughs> How do you do the knitted texture like a crochet beanie? Um, so for those you want to get reference because there's a lot of like there's like a bunch of different like um there's actually a bunch of different like crochet patterns like there's like mermaid's tail and then there's like other ones <laughs> whatever those are called but i think i know what you're talking about um it's like the braid looking thing um those ones tend to have like, they do have like different patterns. So just as like, so like say you have like a sweater, after like you figure out what kind of like, you know, what kind of pattern you want. Um, for the most part, I think the easiest way is probably to just do like stripes. And then stripes, the stripes go down vertically, like on the sleeves as well. So they don't go like this; they go like that way. Um, and then, like these, like like stripes or whatever, these columns are basically just going to be where your braids are. So you can either do it like so, you know, you have like braids, like just do like a chain of hearts, <laughs> or you can do this trick, the Y's, and then like go back and just. Add those these little things afterward. Um, I'm doing the heart trick because I'm drawing fast, so this might not be the fanciest way to do it. And then in each of these like columns, you just do you know, like your, you know, your pattern. Yeah, th those are hearts. <laughs> and you do the same thing with um, the top, but I think like for your sleeves. But I think. It's usually like the top part will have like the more like the bigger braids and then like like the undersides will tend to just be like more like less like bumpy ones or smaller ones. Yeah, these are hearts. <laughs> and then in between, if you really want to go super detailed, you can also do like just like more like smaller ones or like a different pattern, etc. Things like that. Um, and it is it is like a lot of work because you do have to go in afterward and draw in like all of these braids um and that and stuff like that um so if you're gonna like draw this on a person though like you know say like somebody is just like uh you know somebody's like pose like this you would just think of it like instead of like seeing these as braids um just think of first like just map it out on the body like the pattern so like Maybe this is too small. <laughs> so for example, like on this girl, 
I drew like her sweater. If I wanted to go back and add in like some of like those braided crochet like patterns, just consider like, you know, okay, so like I think her sweater probably ends here. So if I wanted to do like pretend it just it's just stripes. It's like a pattern, then it would kind of go up here. And then maybe like that. And then maybe like that cuz like, you know, her sweater is like puffy. And then like from here maybe and going up like that like maybe it would go around like this sort of so just make it easy for yourself think of it as stripes first before you add like your patterns um the fun thing and then i would go back and add in like my like the braids so You can also like if like adding them in between the columns isn't helpful you can add them on these like you know um these stripes as well if you feel like this would like help you figure out like how to like place them all more and then you would just go and like use like what stripes you have on to like plan like how it looks like as a like as if it was painted on and then you just go back in afterward and just add like the like the dimension you know like that does that make sense like that and then the fun part is that because they're so bumpy um you can kind of get away with like also giving them pretty interesting like extra like it will like come out of the silhouette so it doesn't have to stay all inside like this line that you drew and then you just go back like that like that was a really good question so thank you for asking i hope this is helpful some way so like that you can see the y will just follow like your little stripe that you've done and then you can just add in like the body of like the thing like so no problem reimagine skies we are here to help If you like Google like these sorts of sweaters, you'll notice they also have like a lot of different like, like none of them are like, uh, a lot of them are pretty different. So, you know, just pick a reference you like and try and like emulate like that. It can be really tricky like as you get like smaller, but you know. And it is like, you know, even though like I sketched all of this out, if you want to like line this, you would have to go in and like, ugh, like painstakingly go back and like figure how all of this works. And like, you know, a cute trick, I guess, if you just want to do like very basic simplified braid, you can just go in and just, you know, do little X's like that, you know, like, you know. Or V's, I guess. And these ones can be a lot like straight because they're like more like they're closerly. They're they're not like the big bumpy ones. They're like more in line with the actual like material of the you know of the shirt. But yeah, I know this looks a little bit like a mess here, but eh. maybe she made it herself. Can't blame homemade charm. But yeah, hopefully that makes sense. So let's see. Um, so like braids. Start with stripes. Like 
it's just painted on when playing out guides. Then you go back and add the volume. Then add volume. Like so. Okay. Thanks for the cool questions, guys. Hopefully it's not too cold where you guys are. It's been really cold even in like my own house and I have had to like walk around and like super bundled up in like a bathrobe just because like I'm just too cold and if it's too cold I get like really sleepy and no problem reimagine skies goodbye. Adding patterns is also pretty fun, I think. <laughs> Man, has there not been any music playing? That really sucks. I'll have to see what's going on there. It might be technical issues. I mean, when I look at my OPS, it's working, but I don't know. Maybe like. Is the volume just super, super, super low, or is it like just not there at all? Hmm, okay. Have to see what's up with that.
Thanks for your patience, anyways. everyone's having a good week and is looking forward to like you know their new week i think i've been okay but could be better can you draw gloves i really struggle with them um We just finished drawing gloves, so you can go back and take a look to see, like, once the stream is done and see if it's helpful. Uh, but we can always, like, we'll keep it in mind that, like, people want to learn how to draw gloves and maybe we'll make a video on it. <laughs> no problem. Let's see. Um, something like this. Adding patterns can also always be fun. <laughs> Why are you all interested in this cap all of a sudden, huh? <laughs> I don't know. Who can say? He's just some guy. <laughs> Welcome. Just drawing some winter clothes. <laughs> Thanks. It's really interesting how much like the colors can really add to like the drawing, huh?
<laughs> oh, you remember it, huh? You caught that? I hope you guys don't remember, don't recognize him. I wish I didn't know him. Maybe I'll tell you guys at the end, though. <laughs> yeah it's really nice to see people like it's really nice like you know the little community we have because everybody just likes art so much and it's very nice to be among like people who get that i guess <laughs> the Vanessa lore, I guess. Over time, maybe it will. You guys will be able to compile something about it. <laughs> I feel like if you guys do recognize this cat boy, that says that already says a lot about the Vanessa lore. He's from a game. <laughs> I have, yes, I. I have words about it. Um, it honestly, like, it felt a lot like a Dragon Age game, down to the fact that the main characters don't get a happy ending. I was like, this is exactly the same type of thing that happens in the games. So in that respect, I thought it was pretty similar. Um... <laughs> uh, I am a little disappointed in how like the outfits look like all the characters because like um oh bye Kiara because like Quidian I feel like she's so cute but like I don't feel like her outfit is cute enough for her you know because she's so cute like her personality and stuff so I and it kind of looks like a really normal like like tavern wench kind of outfit even though I do really like, like, I do like the art style. I know some people are, like, tired of it, but I do really like the art style. Um, I thought Hira could do, like, fancier things with her hair. Like, everyone just has short hair or, like, ponytails. Like, the main, the main like, villains, just, like, short-ish hair and, like, a braid or, like, a ponytail. It's, like, the main people are just, like, very simple as well. Um, I know it's probably just for, like, animation purposes, like, making things simple. But even, like, their staffs. Because in the games, they have really beautiful, like, staffs. And even in, like, in the show, it's literally just a stick with a rock on top. I'm not even joking. <laughs> I 
And it's like, oh, it's so unfortunate that they didn't like go crazy with like the designs in this way. Um, and it's like, ah. but I did get a lot of like fun seeing like the in-game spells being used in the show as well. Like I was like, hey, that's like, you know, that's the, the magic, like the fire trap spell that I use in game and things like that. It's very cute. Fairbanks. I knew immediately something was off because I remember every single part of Dragon Age Inquisition lore. I knew something was up immediately because I just, like, I did his side quest and then, like, all of, like, I watched it with a couple of friends. So, <laughs> so, like, a couple of friends were like, oh my god, Fairbanks is evil. And I was like, no, he's not. <laughs> but yeah. But yeah, okay. <laughs> um, thanks for coming, guys. Um, yeah, I, a lot of people didn't really enjoy it. I thought it was okay. Um, sadly, I think a lot of like a lot of like adult quote shows tend to be like a little lukewarm because I don't think they like. I think the problem is they always like for fantasy shows they always go for mass appeal. But like the fun part is that this is Thetis, you know. The land of like Tavinter and like Orle, but none of the characters I feel like looked from Tavinter or from Orle or from like you know Parv Parvalon, you know they just looked like they were from a fantasy show, and I feel like that's a real shame. But if you like it, Dara, you might like Dota Dragon's Blood because I thought I thought the first season was like really heavy, um, but. I think the like it has four seasons, and I think as like the first season is a little bit like violent, um, but I think as the seasons go on, it gets like a lot better. So I ended up liking it at the end. But yeah, it's four seasons, so it's quite a bit of investment. But anyways, <laughs> thanks for coming. I really appreciate it. <laughs> thanks for listening to me ramble, and hopefully these tips were useful. I'll post it on the discord and everything uh, remember to like check the links for this um check the description <laughs> for the links to our socials to our memberships to our patreon all things like that all oh, right okay <laughs>